When you want to show off your work to your clients or to the developers, it's really important that you can show them how something will look once coded and that's why Adobe's XD Hover State feature is great because in just a couple of clicks you can really present how something will look once coded. So for example with this Hover State added here you can see how this image might look like and you can use this on blogs or on websites to really show off how something will look once user hovers over with their mouse. All of this in today's video, so let's get started. Hey designer, Alex here and welcome to the channel. So to get started I have the R port at 800 by 800, I'm going to click on the rectangle tool, draw a nice big rectangle at 600 by 600, like so, press enter, click right here and then right here to position it in the center and then for the corner radius I'm going to use 50 so nice and round. I'm going to remove the border and I'm going to include the shadow of 5, 10 and then 20. Press enter or return and I'm going to simply double click right here and call it BG. Press enter, hit ctrl D to duplicate this one and I'm going to call this BG overlay like so. And I'm going to remove the shadow for it and I'm going to simply leave it uh, right here but uh, hide it uh, from view. And then what I'm going to do is click on my BG and we are going to include an image inside. And I have this image from unsplash.com, it's an image of Norway. I'm going to double click inside to see it and I'm going to hold shift and click in one of the corners to enlarge it just a little bit so I can reposition it a bit better. So for example somewhere around here I'd say it's good because I want to see this uh, red house on the right a bit better and this mountain in the background. So that's it for our image and for our BG overlay we're going to uh, still keep it hidden because now I want to include some text inside. So I'm going to click on my text tool, click right here and I'm going to simply type in a few words and I'm going to change it right here to railway and I'm going to make it 28 and I'm going to place it to be bold because what I want is to copy this text from another uh, image which I already created because I really am not that good uh, in Norway. So one, two, three, four for the 40 pixels I'm holding shift and right arrow to nudge it over to the right and I'm going to hit control D to duplicate this one and I'm going to hold shift on this bottom one because I want to create another text and what I'm going to do right here is make it 18, still railway, press enter, and I'm going to click right here to make it regular. So locate it right here, here it is. And what I'm going to do is position it 40 pixels, so 1, 2, 3, 4. And right here I'm going to convert it to area text, like so. I'm going to move this one right here, so shift to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'm going to double click right here and simply extend it to this edge of the text. And I'm going to hold my shift key and move it right here. I'm going to double click inside or simply click right here and enlarge it. Double click and then paste uh, my text. All of this text is from this particular image which I'm going to link in the description of this video so you can check it out and use the same image I am using and as for the railway font it's a free google font simply go to uh, fonts.google.com and you're going to be able to find and download it there. Now I'm going to include my BG overlay just so that we can see the text and because we have 40 pixels distance between uh, this title and this uh, text at the bottom. I'm going to simply hold my shift key, select both of them right here, position it down below to here, hold my shift key and up arrow, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so that I can move it 80 pixels from the bottom. And I'm going to do the same for the BG overlay, so I'm going to move it right here, hold my shift key, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so right here. I'm going to extend it until it fills down this bottom portion and then with it selected I'm going to click right here because we want to straighten these two edges so top left and top right edge locate them right here so you can see top left corner top right corner 
bottom right corner and bottom left corner and you can change all of them independently or click right here if you want to select corner radius for all corners like we did at the beginning of this video. So click right here, I'm going to select it, press zero, press zero, hit enter and you can see that now these two corners are straight and these bottom two corners are rounded. Now what we're going to do next is create a mask. So I'm going to click on rectangle tool once again, draw a rectangle and choose once again 600 by 600, position it in the middle and this is going to be our mask. So we are going to include corner radius of 50. You don't have to do this, but I really like to keep everything consistent, remove the border. And what I'm actually going to do is remove the fill as well. And I'm going to extend the edges to the left and to the right like so. And I'm going to double click right here, call this one a mask. And I'm going to click on it, hold my shift key, select all of them up to BG and simply right click and mask with shape. You can use shift control M or shift command M if you're on a Mac and it's going to create a mask. Now I'm going to change the name of that mask, simply double click and call it a mask. And basically our design is completed. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a component from all of these different elements inside. So I'm going to select the mask, hold my control key, select the BG and hit control or command K. And this is going to create a component. So I'm going to double click and call it blog card, for example, because that's what it is. And this is going to be our component. And as you can see, it's in its default state. So for the default state, what we are going to do is remove all of these components, i.e. hide them from sight. And inside of the hover state, we are going to make them appear. So how can we do this is on the BG, I'm going to hide the shadow because we are, we want it to appear in the hover state itself. So I'm going to click right here and right next to the default state right here on the right, you can see this plus, you can add state and we want hover state. So for the hover state, you can rename it if you want to, it's really up to you. And inside of the hover state, all we have to do is simply lower this mask. So I'm going to lower it down to here and it's going to be extended while in the original state where you can click right here and in its default state, I'm going to simply lower the mask itself. So like this and all the way down to around here, because remember we have this uh, background shadow included. So that's basically it. We want to check how uh, we did. So on the block card and on the BG, we want to include the shadow back and we want the mask to be shown uh, inside of the horror state. So for the mask, I want to extend it back and I want to include it inside. So right here, I really don't know why it did this, but here it is. So if we switch between them, you can see this is the default state. And this is the hover state with the shadow included in the back. And you can simply click right here. As you can see right here, it's going way too fast. So we're going to change that. So you can go to the prototype mode and you can cho choose the hover state right here. And you can see how fast it's going or you can choose the default state and see how fast it is going. And maybe we can choose for example, easy in out and 0 0.8 seconds, for example, and then hit desktop preview and see how that looks like. As you can see, it's now much smoother transition between these two and it appears from the bottom and it all looks nice and soft to the hover. So that's basically it for this video. I really hope you liked it. It's really a basic and simple example. In the future videos, we're going to explore much more complex examples with buttons, with uh, animations, uh, different icon animations. And we're really going to explore how many different possibilities there are with the hover states and how can you use them in your UI work. So I really hope you liked this video. If you did, hit subscribe. Remember to hit that notification bell icon and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.